Hi again. I'm back in business on resistivity. Uh, first thing is that uh, this meter, the A60B, which I've been using, I was worried about it. I'm not so worried now. Uh, I just had to discover that its calibration is very weird and I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you the uh, table of my results of uh, measuring high resistance resistors. As you can see here, it's totally inaccurate at high voltage on the 2 giga ohm range and semi unreliable at uh, high resistance low voltage on the 200 meg range. It's this band through the middle that uh, is sort of accurate. For example, I just measured one that was 83 mega ohm on the 1 kilovolt 2000 mega ohm range. And I, but in fact, when I go over to the 200 meg range it's 30 not 83 and uh, it's the 30 that I am meant to believe so this explains some of my confusion earlier so it's a 30 and so on down through that band of accuracy but in a nutshell everything up to 100 mega ohm is okay to use 200 mega ohm range at 1 kilovolt and above 100 I use the 2000 mega ohm range also at 1 kilovolt. Using those two ranges should be sufficient to keep things accurate which is thank goodness. I suspect that the new meter I've ordered will be precisely the same thing uh, but we shall see. I have a feeling they use the same chipset uh, amongst all of them because they all have the same voltage and resistance ranges on them and whether they manage to get rid of these calibration anomalies in other models mm, I doubt it but now that, now that I know um, I'm, I'm right with it so let's continue the next thing is is that I I built a square. This is a resistance square 25 by 25 millimeter. These are brass sticks. I've polished them up. I would have preferred to have copper but uh, I couldn't find any so this will do fine. And uh, I have uh, some Bakelite as a handle to separate the two and use hot glue to uh, to set it all up and put on a couple of lugs with stiff copper wire soldered on to uh, two really thin wires the thinner the better so that uh, it doesn't uh, tend to pull this over when you set it down for example there if it was too stiff it would just pull it over and so this won't have any effect on it sixty so far so good and uh, I shall now go about tel tabulating some results see you then I have many old mylar diaphragms and I plan to uh, have a go at measuring each of their resistivities as well as some from my 94 quad ESL 63 as well as some new uh, second hand ones as well as possibly even my brand new spares that I have. Can you see the streakiness in the 
diaphragm and you might be able to also see the rainbow effect this is viewing from the other side to the uh, the coating on the diaphragm so it would seem that many of the original diaphragms have been coated on the other side however while I can see that they've uh, done a kind of a coating uh, with uh, as you can see you can it's sort of clear and you can see the double layer here one the black one the cream and uh, the cream is on the uh, other side uh, this is rather strange uh, I don't know why not all but many of the diaphragms have been coated on the other side but there is no res resistivity on the other side that I can uh, measurably measure uh, it, it may even be simply a uh, a plastic layer that's been put on uh, I, I have heard where a plastic layer of a similar material is placed on the diaphragm but usually it's in a way to provide uh, a resistivity so uh, this is a bit strange it could be really really high resistivity that I can't measure ie above 2000 mega ohm per square but it's hard to say and uh, once again hard to get information on, on the web uh, about what quad really did do in the end uh, I I have to ignore it and simply coat on one side I could possibly coat on both sides uh, the method that I'm proposing to myself which you'll see in later videos it's possible I may be able to coat on both sides but but I don't really see the point it's just a, a lot of work for no real gain uh, the, the one advantage I can see of coating both sides is that uh, the electrostatic force forces the coating not the mylar to move so if you have the coating on both sides then the mylar it just moves with it and uh, uh, it, there's no chance of the coating being ripped off the mylar but that never seems to be a problem anyway so I suspect that uh, I will just ignore this uh, odd feature that uh, if somebody can explain to me exactly how they used to coat the diaphragms I'd love to know um, as I say very little information out there As an example, uh, here we have uh, one of the diaphragms, just uh, loose, placing it on a tea towel just to provide a little bit of cushioning to help the seal of the square onto the diaphragm. Okay, so simply place it on and measure. Sixteen point five. So that's very low. Measure another spot. Nine point zero. Thirteen. Eighteen, thirty, eleven, 
11. So, reasonably consistent, uh, giving me anywhere from 8 to about 12. So, there you go. Quite low though. So, let's do some more. So I managed to measure over 30 diaphragms with uh, four measurements for each. And uh, as you can see from this particular spreadsheet coming up, most of them are quite low. However, I guess there's two things to come out of it all, and that is that all my original coatings from my original quads plus many others, they're all quite low and and typically uh, range in the uh, 15 to 17 mega ohm per square. As measured, uh, my original 1994 diaphragms as well as a whole host of others that I'd, uh, I'd done many years ago and uh, I still kept the diaphragms just uh, for interest sake. The uh, major difference apart from those is that uh, a couple that I had uh, redone myself, they typically averaged 500 mega ohm per square up in the blue area. And the uh, original coatings on the newer QBC, QHC diaphragms that I have, they seem to average around about 93 mega ohm per square, discounting the, the bad one, of course. So, so what's the conclusion out of all this? I said that um, I thought the quad should be between 100 and 1000 mega ohm per square, and that I would aim for 150 I'm thinking that uh, that might still be the case. However, aiming for a hundred is uh, is is not a problem, and uh, it will uh, it will be fine. And uh, if it happens to be less, then I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, some of the original ones uh, that are uh, in the 15 mega ohm per square. If I can uh, rebuild them without having to take the diaphragm off, I probably will, and uh, so just leave them the same as they uh, as they are, and not try to uh, recoat them with a much higher resistivity. Uh, one thought to come out of this is why are so many of the uh, the older coatings such low resistivity. I thought perhaps that uh, they might just be dirty and and the resistivity across the surface is uh, reduced due to dirt and grime. But I, I actually spent some time cleaning a couple of uh, loose coatings and I, I've, I found uh, no, no joy to be found there at all. Um, I could just about scrub away the uh, resistive coating and only manage to uh, double the uh, resistivity from say 15 up to 30. Um, not a huge benefit and and the uh, black coating just about disappeared to uh, nothing. So all very confusing but um, but I, I still think uh, I will aim for 100 to 150 mega ohm per square. It will be uh, interesting to see uh, what the uh, sensitivity of the uh, of the panels will be when I finally get them back into a speaker. And some of the early ones I will measure their sensitivity compared to uh, others and uh, try and and find out if there is a difference in sensitivity. As far as frequency response uh, between the different panels, 
uh, with different resistivity. That might be a little bit harder to do, but I will have a go at trying to see if there is a problem there. But I, I, I suspect it's not such a big deal. We, we, we shall see. That, that will be later on in the, the testing phase of all of these panels. And uh, as I say, we shall see. Well, that's about it for uh, resistivity. Um, as I say, I'm going to aim for 100 uh, to 150 mega ohm per square when I redo my panels and, uh, and uh, hope for the best. The next uh, steps will be to actually start rebuilding the panels and uh, some of the mechanical aspects of, of all of that with my uh, jig, etc. All right. Take care all. Bye for now.